Okay, so we're going to have some fun experimenting here. Okay, I thought I'd uh, record some of my experiments that I'm doing in here with my quick transfer paper. Now this one right here, for example, is my quick transfer paper and you can see there's a shiny coat on it right now because it's still wet. And that's because what I've done is I have added this digital ground from Golden, if I can get it to focus, their digital ground for non-porous surfaces. Now the reason I'm using this, the quick transfer paper uh, doesn't transfer inkjet printing very well compared to laser. Laser, it is fantastic. Laser is the best. I recommend everyone just get a color laser printer or black and white laser printer, doesn't matter. But laser printers are just sharp and deep colors the whole bit. Uh, but a lot of people, the majority of people still are using inkjets or they're, or they're using inkjet because they do photos and stuff. And uh, so I'm trying to find a way that um, inkjet can be used with this really cool paper. So what I've done is I've applied the digital grounds to the paper in hopes that when I print with the inkjet, the ink of the inkjet won't soak through down into the coating of the quick transfer paper because that's the problem is the ink is wet and when you get wet on the quick transfer paper it activates the coating and it starts to spread and get into the paper part itself and so you don't get a complete transfer and that's the issue but I'm thinking that this digital grounds isn't really going to work either because it is made to cause the surface to be porous so it can absorb the ink and I think it's just going to do the same thing as if I didn't have it on here at all. But as experiments go you have to try out different stuff, right? So here's what else I've done. I've taken another quick transfer paper and you can see that half of it is really glossy and, and the other half is uh, is not it has maybe a slight sheen to it what I've done is I divided my quick transfer paper in half and then I sprayed the whole thing first with workable fixative and the idea here is that it would put some kind of a barrier on the paper itself it would it would go on top of the coating that is part of this quick transfer paper to cause a barrier so that I could now put whatever I want on top of the workable fixative such as the digital grounds and that's what I did here. So now I have the workable fixative on the whole sheet and then at the bottom half here I've added the digital grounds and you can see I put a little note here digital grounds added to the second part. Now the way the workable fixative works though however is when I spray, for example, over here on my drawing, okay, when I'm finished drawing, I'm going to spray it with workable fixative to seal it so that you don't easily smear it whenever you, you know, handle it and stuff. But the other nice thing about workable fixative is it allows you to keep adding more and more layers of graphite so that you can get even richer and richer and deeper tones uh, that you normally can't get by just continuing on with graphite with no layer of workable fixative. So the workable fixative allows you to add this clear layer and then you can put more graphite on top of it. So this, this stuff here is really great because it, it accepts, it accepts the, the graphite or whatever uh, on top of it. And so you can just layer and layer which is really cool. And I'm thinking well, what if I was to put that on here to seal the coating that's on this paper here, and then maybe the inkjet will print to the workable fixative. The graphite works, why not the ink? We'll give that a shot too. So once this DG dries, 
I'm going to flatten these sheets out because they're going to get kind of wrinkly, I can tell here. So I'm going to, I'll just flatten it out on my heat press, or you can use an iron, whatever, but flatten it out. Then I'm going to run it through my uh, inkjet printer over here and uh, print it out. And then we're going to do some transfers and see what kind of quality I can get with an inkjet printer as opposed to my uh, color laser printer. Okay, so we'll be back with that. Okay, so we're going to have some fun experimenting here. Now what I've done is picked up four exact pieces of wood here. They're five by fives with rounded corners. And we're going to mark these for each one of these printouts that we've done here. So let me show you what we have. First off, we have the printout I did on the inkjet. These three are all inkjets, as you can see right here, these three. And that's the laser. And you probably could see right off the bat how rich and colorful my laser print is compared to these three inkjet prints. So with the quick transfer paper on an inkjet, and especially my inkjet, which is not even that good because I could see these little lines here. It's, it's, I've had nothing but trouble with that printer since the day I bought it. But uh, these three here are inkjets and they just seem kind of bleached out in their colors because the ink just soaks right in. If this was actually inkjet photo paper, then it's actually made to make the colors come out way uh, richer looking, could like just like this here. And, uh, you know, it, it would be very close somewhat if you have a better printer than I do. But what I want to do is just see which one of these methods here uh, actually improves on the inkjet experience for transferring using this quick transfer paper. So the first one here, as you can see, this really sweet looking printout, which is from my laser jet. I'm going to write laser on this board. And we're going to do the laser on that one. And then we have this one here, which is the quick transfer paper with the digital grounds only. So I painted it on. I wish I could spray it on. I, if I can get myself some kind of, uh, maybe I'll put in a spray bottle and see if that will make it go on a little less wet. But this is the digital grounds only. So I'm going to put DG only on this board. Okay, and we'll move this to the side. Now this one here is just my quick transfer paper printed with an inkjet. I didn't put any coating on it at all. So this is just this is just a quick transfer paper QTP only. And you can see how it differs from printing with laser. And then this one here is the quick transfer paper, of course. They're all quick transfer paper. Uh, the Ricks can do it quick transfer paper, but with the different coatings and stuff. This one is divided in half. So you have, you have one half, which is uh, the workable fixative. I'll put that on the top there. And the bottom is the workable fixative plus the digital grounds. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's see here. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. That's fine. All right. That way I don't waste another board for nothing. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Now, if you can see, probably, you know, maybe I just zoom in using the software there. But take a look at this. You can see that printing on the workable fixative kind of makes it a little spotty looking compared to the digital grounds. So the digital grounds is actually made to print on and it is definitely a superior looking image compared to just the workable fixative. So I can tell right off the bat that just spraying my paper with workable fixative by itself is not going to do the trick 
because I, I'm going to imagine that these little spots are going to transfer over, but we're going to do them both. Let me go ahead and split these two, and uh, let's go ahead and transfer those on right now while we're at it, while we have it here. So, I'm going to turn this over, because the writing is on the back, and we have workable fixative plus DG goes on the bottom half. So, let me get some Liquitex gel medium here. And we're going to coat the board evenly through. Make sure it's all wet. Give this thing a fair chance to transfer. Scrape off the excess and smear it on. Smear it off. Okay, so I'm coating the whole board here with a light film of gel medium, making sure I don't miss any spots. All right. Okay, and the bottom half is this one. Top half is this one. Probably didn't have to cut the sheet in half because could have just laid it on there in the middle. And brayer it really, really good. You want really good contact here. All right, so we're done with that. Get it off my table. I'm gonna set it off to dry. Now I could dry this in uh, you know, one minute with a hair dryer, but since I got others to do, I'm just gonna let it dry on its own. There's no time limit as to when you have to uh, peel it. So we'll just leave that alone and now let's do the next one here and okay this is the QTP paper only so let me find that one okay that's this one QTP paper again probably noticed from my videos I don't usually wear gloves. All right, let's just put that smack down down on there. The whole sheet. Make sure we squeeze out everything. Nice contact, no air. Get all the air out, get all the ooze out. If you see any air bubbles, you gotta get them out. Usually you just go from the center outwards, you usually can get it all out pretty good. Okay, I think I got that pretty good. It looks pretty nice and pressed 
Okay, so now if I can just lift that whole board up. All right, and I'm gonna move that over to get dried. Now the next one is just going to be the digital grounds only one. So this is the one here with digital grounds, this stuff here, digital grounds, put on the paper, on the paper, yeah. Okay, same deal. Let's just get that all on there. We'll just put that aside to dry. This is the laser, what the paper was actually designed for, the laser. So let's get that nice and coated. Yeah, let's put the laser on. All right, looks like I got good contact. Let's, uh, oops, I lifted that corner up. Try not to lift it up. It already wants to peel off. Okay, and let's put that aside to dry. One hour later. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I took off for about an hour, and uh, they're all dry by now, no doubt. So let's see. Why don't we go ahead and uh, start with. This one here is just the quick transfer paper by itself. Quick transfer paper only with the inkjet. All right, so this is the inkjet. This is the base um, to copy, to compare with, because this paper was not designed for inkjet. All right, so. We're going to do it with inkjet here, and then I'm going to do the laser one so you can immediately see the difference. And then we'll do all the other experimental ones. So, the usual procedure is you wet the back. Then you take a clean paper towel, and you take up all the excess. You don't need all this excess on here, and, and taking it up allows the paper to usually peel off really nice as one peel rather than having to do multiple even though that's not a big deal and then just slowly peel it back like so okay so we got some left behind there That just comes off really easy. It's not a rubbing. You don't do really any rubbing. It's just to get the corner started so you can grab onto something like that and then you just peel it off. That's the whole purpose of this paper is so you don't have to do that, you know, the standard way that people do it where they they wet the whole thing and then they rub, 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 and then you got millions of these little pieces all over the place. And you know, this is just I just do this to get it started like that so you have some kind of a tab or something to hold on to and then you just peel it off just like that all right so as you can see you certainly can use the inkjet printer with the quick transfer paper but it is slightly lighter than if with the laser so you can compare here let me just tear this off. We're going to be we're going to do this so that you guys can you guys can all see the differences here. So take a look at that. And you can see that you get a lighter version of the original. So this was the original inkjet. And then that's what you get left onto the thing. Now, if you don't care about it being somewhat you know, faded looking, lighter then yeah by all means you know use your uh, inkjet printer with the quick transfer paper it peels off just like anything else but you know I want that rich color so 
now let's go use the laser printed one here. Let's see. There we go. It says laser. So let's wet it. All right. And then we want to, this is a wet one, but I'll, I'm sure it will do a good job of taking up the excess moisture somewhat. All right. Now this is what a laser will produce for you. Same thing. We'll peel it back. All right. And if you'll look, you get you get all the color. See that? You get it all. Look at that. And compare it. Compare it to the inkjet. See how rich and colorful the, the color laser does? Get it in there in the light. Compare that with the inkjet, which is really faded looking. All right. So this is without anything treated on the paper. This is using the quick transfer paper as it is on the laser printer and the inkjet printer. All right, let's get these out of the way. What happens if we put the digital grounds on the quick transfer paper? Will it improve it? Let's see. Get a dry piece of towel here. Take up the excess moisture. Okay, and then peel as usual. Okay, so I'm still leaving a lot of paper behind. All right, well, we'll just tear it off like so. And I'm going to have to see if I can remove this paper without removing the image. See if there's any possibility here. Right now it's proving to not, not provide the best uh, release. Now i got to figure out how am I going to get it started here. Let's see. Let's try this. Okay, that's not working too great. Let me get something here. Let me try this board here. They've got something with an edge to kind of get it started. Now this is a hassle because you're almost reverting back to using regular printer paper and doing that rub-a-dub, except, except this will release a lot easier. As you can see, it just comes off this way. but. I don't, the whole idea of making this paper is so you don't ever have to do this rubbing kind of bologna. And then you risk ruining your, uh, your image in the process. So, but it's coming off. It's just a little extra work because of the, the material went right through the coating. A little bit there. You really can't even do this with the glue and rub method. This actually comes off easier. Just You just slide it off with some kind of a straight edge, which you can't do with the rub method. If it sounds like I don't like the rub method, it's because I don't like the rub method. Yes, it's free, but you get what you pay for, you know, and I hate it. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. I got all the paper off. Just a little bit of effort, not much. But that 
was from using the digital grounds on the quick transfer paper. Did it provide any advantage? Well, let's compare it with the quick transfer paper without the DG. And I'm going to say no. It didn't provide any advantage whatsoever. It looks identical to me in depth of color. I see no difference. So using digital grounds directly on the quick transfer paper provides no added benefit and in fact causes, causes more pain because you had to do all that scraping off um, which you don't have to do if you just used your uh, inkjet printer straight on the quick transfer paper. All right, so that's that. Now, the next one we want to take a look at here is the workable fixative and the workable fixative with the DG on top of it. So let's go ahead and remove that. Once again, paper towel. Take up any excess water not needed. And let's see, workable fixative by itself. Well, easy pill. Easy pill, just like a laser. Easy pill. And what's really cool is you get almost exactly what was printed. So I am impressed with that. The only thing is, is what was printed has these little tiny little tiny specks of white from the paper in between that uh, that wasn't like the um, the digital grounds which doesn't have so you can see how more solid the color is if you add digital grounds on top of the workable fixative but you know that workable fixative is giving me a lot of hope now I just allow this to dry so let me just do this again here this should peel right off too, I would think, because the workable fixative was put on first before the digital grounds. So I'm hoping this is going to do the trick, and this would be your solution for inkjet. Let's see. Does it peel easy? Yes, it does. It peels easy as well. So the workable fixative is a success as a base. Definitely. So that's interesting, but the question is, did it provide us any advantage over just printing with printing with the uh, inkjet printer straight on? And I would have to say no. Okay, this is just the inkjet printer with nothing added to it, and um, no. If anything, the workable fixative, eh, well, no, it's, it's pretty close. I mean, it does seem a little bit better, but not much. And if you can look, the digital grounds did not provide any advantage to the quick transfer paper at all. What I will say, though, is the workable fixative made it a lot easier to peel off. And it took everything. There's, there's nothing left on the paper, just like if you use the laser. There's nothing left on the paper with the workable fixative. So the workable fixative is getting me closer to a solution for quick release of inkjet printing. But I do need to address how am I going to get around the little dots that I see difference there. There you go, folks. We're definitely getting closer to a solution to inkjet printing with the quick transfer paper. I don't think we're there yet. Unless you're happy with the faded look, I'm never happy with, with that. Because the laser, which is right here on top, you can see, stands king supreme. Or for your ladies, Queen Supreme. These right here, I would say, are pretty much the same, which means there is no advantage 
to putting those uh, the digital grounds or the workable fixative with the exception, of course, the workable fixative allowed for 100% release, which I thought was pretty cool. Without it, I mean, we only had like a little bit of paper we had to peel off afterwards. Not a big deal. See, like that. All right. Okay, well, I hope you like this uh, little experimentation video. Uh, please give me a like. Uh, it appears that my videos are not coming up on the recommendations as uh, as much as I would hope. But if you leave me a like, you would really be supporting content like this where I can show you different kinds of experiments so that uh, we'll eventually get to something that would just be like awesome regardless of the printer that you use. But right now, you just can't beat the laser printer with the quick transfer paper is still, I believe, the number one way to transfer images, full color images, onto wood, fabric, metal, glass, I don't care what, it does a great job. Alright, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.